Hey guys, it's Uncle Jonah back, back with a beer review for you. And this one's another one from the Guinness series. Um, and this one is one that I haven't seen before. This one is Guinness Dublin Porter. Um, it's 3.8% on the old ABV, but I quite like this bottle. It's a nice little sort of short stubby bottle. It is a 500, which is always good. But look at that, it's got a little bulge in the old neck as well as the... Uh, as well as the actual thickness. This is a this is a proper old school bottle. Look at that label. This is a very, very new beer. Uh, but the label is old school, very old school. It almost looks like a luggage sticker that someone would have sticking on their suitcase. Um, let's have a look. And it says, a group of enterprising brewers on a quest to explore new recipes uh, reinterpreted old ones and collaborate freely to bring exciting beers to life. Um, with origins in 1796, which as we all know is when uh, Guinness starts, uh, our brewer's diary uh, created Guinness Dublin Porter, a sweet smooth um, with malt and dark caramel notes. Well, I quite like this. And even if you look at the top, the, uh, oh, which way should we twist it? There we go. Guinness logo is on there, but it's slightly different. Let us see, because I usually can't get this to focus. Let's do that. You gonna focus on there? Boom, come on. No, but you can see that is far different to the normal Guinness one. Anyway, Guinness Porter. Boom. What's the difference between a stout and a porter? Well, as we all know, they are more or less the same. Bit of smoke on there. Oh, a stout is much, much darker, much richer, and you could argue that the water is slightly different too. But essentially, it's darker, yeah? Let's go for a pour. Let's go for a quite an aggressive pour, because this one's a porter. This isn't a proper Guinness, so we don't have to worry about the shamrock or any of that kind of wrongness on there. Whoop, there we go. Got a nice bit of head. That's a king head. Look at that. Well, dark, dark, darkness. Have I got a torch to hand? I don't, I'm afraid, but I can tell you, that looks on the camera like it's jet black, but I can tell you, it is not at all. Yeah, there is definitely a little bit of kind of light through there. Head-wise, got a good fingers head, lovely and kind of pale, a very, very traditional kind of Guinness style head. But this one is one back on the colour note from there. So I'd say we've got a lot of dark, dark malt in there. Ooh. But not too roasty on the aroma, which is um, interesting. I'm getting kind of sweetness, which is weird, and not caramel sweetness. I'm getting a kind of a fruitiness, which is weird. Definitely malty, definitely roasty, but not as much as you would think. Guys, let's get cracking and dive into this bad boy. Oh, straight away, I can tell this is not a stout. This is definitely a porter. You can taste the wateriness in there, which some people would say, oh, is that a bad thing? Well, not, not really, because that's another difference. With the really dark kind of stouts, you do get that kind of milkiness, and I'm not talking definitely about milk stouts, although that is definitely an example. This one is a bit more watery than that. We've got a lot of sweetness in there, sweet character. Um, yeah, that kind of dark fruit, that mince pie kind of, I don't want to say Christmas pudding because it's not that kind of, it's not that dark, but it's a sort of mince pie kind of thing going on. Um, even perhaps a hint of nuttiness.
Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's definitely sweet up front. That nuttiness is perhaps almond, perhaps cashew, that kind of stuff. This is definitely not the old cigar um, lying in the old office of the man in uh, in Dublin. Um, this paints a very, very different picture. And it tastes, if I did this blindfolded, I would not say that this was a dark colour. I'd say this is definitely a kind of a winter rail. Would I say it's a porter? It doesn't have enough roastiness to it, really. It's far too sweet. And the sweetness continues on your lips. This is this is a very nice beer. 3.8%. I think this is a no-brainer. If you could get this in the pub, this is definitely a sessionable ale. Mm, look at that head. That head is fast disappearing, leaving a little bit of lacing on the glass. If you are interested in such matters, I, however, am not. I'm going to top it, top us up. Be a shame to waste any of the lovely stuff. Now, is this a typical example of the Guinness? No, it's not. It's not even like the Beamish Red or the uh, the Beamish Lager, which you don't seem to be able to get anymore. But I remember the Enigma Lager. Do you guys remember that? Um, this is something different again. Um, I quite like this. If you can get this on offer, because we don't want to pay five pounds for a bottle, if you can get this one on offer down in a supermarket, three for a fiver, maybe even four for a fiver, I think you could do a lot worse than having a few of these in stock for when people come calling, because they will they will appreciate it. They will think it's roasty. They will think everything, and then when they start drinking, they will be bemused because this is definitely not the traditional Guinness style. Um, I quite like this. Guys, do me a favour, get down to your local supermarket, get down to your local off-licence, find some of this fine beer. This is the Dublin Porter by Guinness. This has been Uncle John reviewing it. If you would like to see more of these views, especially more Guinness reviews, because there are more coming up, please click like down below, click subscribe, Keep the channel going. We'll see you real soon for some more beer and more wrongness. Cheers and beers, guys. Silky smooth.